Okay, we're ready to start uh, the session. Thank you very much for enduring. We've saved uh, you know, some of the best talks for this last session. So I'm very excited uh, to get going. And uh, we'll start uh, with the first talk. The first talk is by uh, Chang Yu Choi. Uh, Dr. Choi is a vice president and director of the Computer Vision Lab at Samsung, Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. Uh, he received his PhD from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in 1999 for his work on chaotic neural networks with applications to bidirectional associative memory. Uh, he pioneered the development of different biometric techniques on Samsung smartphones. His innovations include partial fingerprint recognition on Galaxy smartphones in 2015, which played a key role in the launch of the Samsung Pay service, uh, and also face facial recognition for unlocking smartphones, which he did in 2017, uh, which changed the landscape of, uh, mobile bio of the mobile biometric industry. Uh, without uh, further ado, Dr. Choi, please. Today he's gonna tell us about deep model compression and acceleration towards on-sensor AI. Okay, uh, thanks for the introduction, uh, Dr. Alf Dekel. Um, thanks everybody for having me here. Um, yeah, I'm from the uh, Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology. In short, uh, it's SAIT, so uh, literally and technically we have a AI inside. So, um, yeah, first of all, uh, I'd like to make it clear in the terminology. In my terminology in this talk, um, on, sense, uh, on device AI means that a neural net runs on a mobile AP, and uh, on sense AI means uh, it runs on the a CMOS image sensor. So, uh, how do you make a neural net run on an image sensor. That's what I'm going to talk about. So this is part one. Um, this is a, um, a brief introduction of myself. Um, I've been doing um, face recognition for many years. Um, this is a scene of a Galaxy S8 Unpack event in 2017. Um, our face recognition made debut um, at this time. Uh, six months later, uh, Apple came out with their um, Face ID, and afterwards, um, many others have been following us. So, um, please correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, to my best knowledge, uh, this was the world's first deep neural network that ran on a CQ element, like um, Trustion of ARM. Um, on the, AI, on the AP, we have uh, these um, uh, four uh, different um, networks. Um, this is the uh, image rec um, face recognition pipeline, and there are uh, uh, three major feedback pair. Um, so um, if uh, there is not a face, then um, it goes back to uh, the uh, camera and wait for the uh, next frame, and then if there's no uh, real face, I mean the real face is that um, if there's a fake face, uh, there's a face but uh, from a photo or there's a face from a video clip, then again it goes back to uh, the camera and wait for the um, another uh, face input. That's how it works. Um, so running on device uh, bring up, brings up uh, us many advantages. Uh, first of all, um, it gives you, uh, it saves you a uh, cloud cost. So on the average, users are not their phone um, 70 times a day uh, for heavy users, uh, even um, they uh, unlock 200 uh, times a day. Secondly, um, the on-device AI protects your privacy. So biometric data, your private data never leaves your phone. And thirdly, and most importantly in this talk, um, it can save you uh, energy at the same time and then um, it gives you a fast response. So um, if you think about the uh, autonomous driving, it, that's very obvious. Um, the uh, auto autonomous driving car should uh, perceive and uh, react faster than uh, human drivers. 
Um, one of the approaches to solve the uh, limited resource problem is a deep model compression. The model compression actually um, reduces the bit width of weight. So um, and then um, this is um, actually we proposed a solution to uh, remedy that kind of um, limitations. So uh, this is our paper from um, at, at CBPL last year. Um, uh, the left picture shows the uh, uh, each layer uh, of the network um, by uh, minimizing the task rows. Uh, we can jointly train the um, the uh, quantization interval. Uh, that is trainable, so uh, the parameters, uh, we can train the uh, parameters and then the model weight at the same time. So actually the key point uh, in this paper is that uh, we proposed a um, quantization interval that is trainable, and then using that uh, quantization interval um, uh, for um, um, the pruning and then the um, clipping of uh, weight and actuations as possible. So uh, the result is that um, the uh, table on the uh, right shows that uh, the full precision um, uh, accuracy is, uh, on the image that top one accuracy is 73.7%. Uh, but by jointly training um, the weight, the four-bit quantization network actually shows this exactly the same accuracy as uh, uh, the full precision. And even it's better uh, at a top five accuracy. And um, for three bit, I would say um, I can claim that um, the three bit quantization is pretty much comparable to the full precision uh, accuracy. So um, we've tested various uh, network architectures on uh, ImageNet uh, classification task. So AlexNet, VGG, ResNet, all the other uh, networks didn't reveal any um, accuracy drop. Um, so uh, let's look at the uh, computation side. Um, conversion can be implemented using a Mac, obviously. So um, the SIMS accelerator can do the 128-bit processing all at once. So if we employ um, four uh, accumulators, four, um, four 32-bit accumulators, then um, it can actually incorporate, accommodate the um, um, four 16-bit uh, um, uh, activations and weights. And then if we uh, employ 8-bit um, accumulator, then um, 16 uh, 4-bit Auxiliary uh, activations and uh, four bit weights uh, can be uh, uh, computation all at once. So, this is very important that um, for the existing um, CPUs and DPUs, um, the minimum um, data container size is 8 bit. So, since a multiplication of two four bit uh, data has to have 8 bit accumulator, so four bit data is perfect to speed up the uh, calculation uh, in terms of the existing uh, hardware. Um, we can also um, implement the convolution by using uh, logical operations. So bitwise operation VN and VCount can replace MAC. VN is a logical N. Uh, VCount actually counts the, num the number of ones in a vector. Um, doing that, um, before doing that bitwise operation for the convolution, we need a little bit arrangement for the uh, activations and weights. Um, as you can see in this figure, A3 is just a collection of MSPs of activation. A0 is a, just a collection of uh, LSPs of activation. Likewise, we can arrange the um, weights um, accordingly. Then. With these um, bitwise operations, can do exactly the same job as uh, the MAC does. 
Okay, now we are ready to compare the um, computational efficiency um, of realizing uh, conversion using uh, MAC and um, bitwise operation. In a nutshell, if weight and activation are less than full bit, then um, bitwise operation becomes more efficient. The uh, table below shows that um, the number of SIM operations and uh, number of uh, data road um, required for the uh, convolution calculation. So actually, the uh, bitwise uh, operation um, start to win this game uh, against Mac operation um, from a four bit and forever. So three bit and two bit is way more efficient. Mm, we um, looked up uh, how the uh, transistor count changes. So uh, three two bit multiplication requires um, 21,000 of transistors. Uh, eight bit multiplication requires um, um, three um, uh, 21,000 to 3,000 uh, transistors, and four bit and and b count only requires 70 transistors. So uh, in this way. Um, we can save energy um, at least uh, 40 times and uh, 300 times. So um, we can think of the phase detection um, on sensor. So the phase detection on sensor can slightly change this uh, uh, processing pipeline. So um, the image sensor can detect the phase, and if a phase is found, then the image sensor wakes up the AP. In this way, the energy can be saved. We can even um, think of the on-sensor um, um, liveness test, I mean, anti spoofing So it will save a, a lot more energy in that way. Um, Compute on-sensor is not far from now. Uh, we already have an experience to make a three-stack sensor that sensor is used to record um, super resolution, uh, super slow motion uh, at Galaxy S9. The, um, the third stack was DRAP memory. So if we want a computer sensor right now, then all we need to do is just attach a small DVSB next to the memory. That's all. But if we want a more compact realization, if we want to make a two stack sensor, then it becomes a bit uh, more tricky. Um, the micro MPU can replace DSP, and MNAM is uh, one of the strong candidates for the embedded memory for the second stack. But MNAM is 10 times slower than SLAM. And on the other hand, SLAM is super um, expensive, and it uh, occupies a lot of uh, areas. So depending on the tasks, we need some compromise between them. So um, compute on sensor, I believe that's uh, one way to realize uh, memory century computing. So for von Neumann architecture, there were um, all the computers, single core, multi-core, and many core. But we are now uh, approaching the um, near memory computing error. And then uh, just by attaching a small computing core next to the memory, that's the uh, near memory uh, processing. And we have one more to go. That's a in-memory computing. Um, everybody knows about uh, the in-memory computing uh, here that uh, conversion can be done in analog way. Um, basically, it's a, a kind of mixed signal processing inside the memory. The second part is the um, image processing on sensor. Um, I have five slides to go, OK? Um, Camera is a light capturing device, so it measures the intensities of incoming light in a pixel on a sensor plane. That's obvious. But light existing in the physical world is not the same as what you see from the photo. There are two major uh, distortion sources. Firstly, the pixel intensity, um, the pixel sensitivity varies according to the um, light uh, spectrum. And then the human uh, color perception is nonlinear. So uh, we have to compensate those two distortions by um, image processing. 
when it comes to the image processing and computer vision, we always start with RGB images with 8-bit data. But actually, low image um, has a 12-bit data. So if you do compute on sensor, then you can make use of uh, extra 4-bit information uh, on sensor. Camera is a light capturing device again, but this time um, it can measure uh, direction of light. If we slightly move the uh, sensor plane backward and then um, locating um, some small um, uh, optical element between the lens, uh, lens and the sensor plane, then actually the um, sensor plane encodes the direction of light into uh, pixel positions. So um, you might heard of the Bayer pattern, so RGGB pattern on the left. Uh, but there are other kinds of um, pixel arrangement. Uh, Samsung has image sensors of, of all with this um, pixel arrangement. So for the autofocus, we use a 2PD sensor. PD means a photodiode. And then um, in 2PD sensor, every sub-pixel has two photodiodes. So 2PD sensor actually produces left and right image so that uh, it acts like a stereo camera with a micro bit, uh, this baseline. And for the low rise chart, tetra cell and nona cell is kind of configuration. Uh, we can binning that in the row right, but if we slightly modify the um, optical element, then the uh, tetra cell can detect the four directions of light, and nona cell can detect the nine directions of light. So technically, we can do the um, uh, light field imaging. So here's the uh, takeaways. For the first part, um, I suggest um, not to compromise accuracy even on the um, resource limited uh, devices. So low bit precision network, um, developing excellent algorithm for that is very, very important. For the second part, I mean, sensor C is more than you see. So um, compute should be co-located where data comes in. And finally, memory cent uh, centric computing is challenging, but uh, promising. We are living in a um, digital age, so we already um, have accomplished three uh, orders of magnitude in uh, computational efficiency compared to the DSPs in early 80s. But in analog computing, we can achieve three more orders of magnitude. And if we succeed to go from analog to bio, then there are five more. Yeah. That's all. Um, that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>